Hey there. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of my older work. We're going to talk about the lighting and kind of, I'll tell you my inspiration, how I did it, why I did it, and uh, we'll go from there. I'm Daniel Norton, photographer here in New York. I make videos like this one. I make philosophy videos. I make gear videos. Everything photography, basically. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, go ahead and subscribe. And let's take a look at this one. This is actually kind of a fun shot, in a sense, because I get asked for this a lot. This was shot on film. This was actually shot with the Fuji, what we call Fuji, Fuji Roids, what we used to call the Fuji FP uh, 3000B, I think it was what it was called. 3000 speed instant film. Um, so it was shot, for those of you who don't have experience with that kind of stuff, it was shot with uh, an older camera called an RZ67, which is a film camera, which I also have some film shots, uh, which I will talk about in another video here and here, um, that I shot with this, but you would use it initially you put a Polaroid back on this camera so you could test the lighting. That's what people used to do. But then uh, people like me that really loved the way that the Polaroid looked or the Fuji looked, we used it as final products. So this is actually a, a instant image, right? It takes 30 seconds to develop and scanned. So I, I like uh, the reason why I'm showing this image, first of all, because it's, it's Fuji and, and that, but I think this is interesting because on first glance, if you were to use a word to describe this image, I think a lot of people would say soft. This image is lit with hard light. So th this kind of goes into that idea of where the light falls, um, exposure, and balance. Okay, there's two lights here. All right, the most obvious one, of course, is making the bright spot, which is kind of in the chest area, right? But if, again, like I've said in other videos, uh, if we look at the shadow patterns everywhere, we can start to analyze this light. So number one, we'll look at this, okay? Here's our shadow here. This tells me that this light is either equal to or below her, right? And if we then follow the light over to here, we can see the shadow here. Okay, so the light's probably, that light's a bit lower. It's probably like right around her chest height and shooting just straight across, kind of giving her that, uh, that light on her chest. It's, I'm probably using some kind of barn door, I'm guessing, because I can see the fade here. And that's important. This is something we want to talk about. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> <clears throat> when we talk about feathering the light and using the edge of the light, this is where the light becomes like a little bit more gentle. And also when you are, because when you when you, when you have a light, it's very focused in the center, it starts to kind of fade up uh, gently. And this is where I'm taking advantage of this, right? I'm using the barn door to cut the light off a bit here. And that's making the light on her arm a little bit darker, which then picks up a little bit more texture, which then feels a little bit more gentle, right? But you're probably saying, well, hold on, you're lighting her from below? That should look terrible because you don't light people from below, Daniel. Well, I'm also, there's another light coming from over here. How do I know that? Because look at this shadow. And again, these lights are not at really steep angles. They're actually at pretty, pretty delicate angles to her so that this shadow is not that prominent, right? We can see it here under her lip, right? We can see it here. And if you notice here and here, it's filled in and that's filled in, of course, by, by this light. This, this light is bouncing off her chest, essentially, and bouncing back up and giving, I mean, some of it's hitting her, uh, some of it's directly hitting too with the barn door, but a lot of that is just the, 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 the skin just bouncing back, you know, her chin's down, right? Um, this is actually allowing for the, the light to kind of fill itself. This light is very precise, precisely um, barn door down again and also dimmed to give the effect of the light feeling softer because even though technically if you're using terms, right, we talk about this a lot, like brightness and darkness doesn't have anything to do with hard or soft, but your mind kind of perceives sometimes the brighter light being harder. So, or sometimes the bright light being softer, depending on how you, you know, you look at these pictures, people shoot outside and it's like all blown out and they're like, it's so soft, but it's not soft because you're using the sun, right? Same kind of thing here. This isn't soft, right? It's just blown out, right? So it, there, there, there would be, um, there could theoretically be detail. I mean, obviously there's not any detail in the center of somebody's chest, but there could be detail there that is just gone now because it's obliterated because of the exposure. And up here, we're using the edge of the light, the feather, so it's a little bit more gentle. And because none of the shadow, none of the hard shadow, except for the two that I pointed out, which is right there and right there, right? 
Only those two shadows are very uh, prominent, and they're not really where you're drawing your face initially, right? It's not initially where you're looking, even though every photography book that was written in 1975 tells you you look at the, the bright spot first. That's not 100% true. That's just a very generic thing to say. It's going to bring you in, but this 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 creates mystery, right? Her pose, her eyes closed, the subtlety of it, the fact that I let the background go dark, the fact that it has a very shallow depth of field, all ties into this very gentle feel of this image that I wanted to create. I wanted a very gentle feel, and, and I did it with hard light. And you can do it with hard light. You just have to understand how light works and how it's going to kind of work together to create um, an overall vibe. I, I think possibly, and again, I'm not sure because this is a while ago, I believe there's a very, very small chance that there's another light over here, like maybe a softbox or something, um, or it's a bounce card. It's one or the other. Um, it's, it's hard to know without knowing how exactly this light was angled. My thought is, based on these shadows, is that this light ripped past her and hit her and then bounced off something over here, which was likely a bounce card. And then that bounce card is what's giving, you see how it's a little bit, zoom in a little bit. You see how it's a little bit brighter um, over on this shoulder? Just a little bit. Like it's, then it, then you, maybe you think it should be, right? Because it should start to fade off darker and darker if this is your bright spot. Your mind wants it to go darker, dark, but it actually kind of stays. And I think that's because there's a fill card there. Um, and also that would uh, explain the detail in her hair. So, you know, normally hair doesn't need a light on it necessarily, uh, directly on it to shine, but it does need the direction of the light to be correct. And I don't think, based on where I see these two lights coming from, which is basically here and here, I don't see, um, I don't see any reason why that would light this up. There, uh, there is this moment where you might think to yourself, well, hold on, that might be, that might be one light, Daniel because the, the way the shadows are falling, but it's definitely not because I can see it filling itself. So I can see it being filled. So there's definitely one light is lower than the other. And uh, that's how we're getting that. Soft feel with hard light, shooting film. Um, I used to love to shoot the stuff, Canon Packs 10, you just shoot 30 seconds. I would shoot one, just throw it on the table, shoot another one, boom, boom, boom. You shoot a few, then you pause for a moment, you peel them and you look at all of them and you can really, it, you know, that's one thing I really miss about an instant film, but. What can I say? They don't make it anymore, so got to move on. It's and, and I know what you're probably thinking, oh, but, you know, you can do that with digital, you know. Yeah, but there's something cool about peeling the Polaroid apart that, that I just really miss. So that's me being, uh, uh, you know, remembering nostalgic, I guess is the word of that. But, man, that was so fun. In any case, if you have done already, guys, go ahead, subscribe, ring the bell so you get uh, notifications for more videos. And I'll see you next time.